Hi everyone and welcome to the Week Doctor's Guide to ServiceNow episode number 20 and today we're going to talk about how to do branch and join in flows for those who might have seen it and done it a lot of times in the workflow we're going to take a look how can we actually achieve this in flows as well and let's see I haven't really got used to the, the Mac and the PowerPoint so I'm just going to see oh there we go my name is, is, is Goran Lundqvist aka the Wish Doctor uh, I've been working for ServiceNow or for ServiceNow for about a month but with the application or the platform for a couple of years anything from being a technical consultant to being a customer and doing a architecture or technical stuff or teaching even and so on uh, I've written everything down here so I don't want to talk about it every time hopefully you know who I am otherwise just read through it you can see if, if I'm a guy who you can trust what I'm talking about if you'd like to connect just feel free to hit me up on LinkedIn or Twitter or YouTube and of course subscribe to my YouTube channel I also oops that didn't work let's see there we go let's go back one oh sorry about that one last try then i gave up there we go i also written a book called the witch doctor's guide to service now where i try to write down all the knowledge i have found out over the years and which i would like to give to you so you don't do the same mistakes i do if you haven't read it or seen it go into amazon and search for service now it will pop up there for you to look at perhaps something for you if you haven't read read the reviews and so on but enough about that stuff and my very big agenda is of course how do we do this so let's skip these things and let's go to how do i get rid of that one uh, don't say that but huh, there we go so first let's take a look what am i talking about so, wow, ha, huh. that scared me, that was stupid, ha, 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 I don't know if you can see it on the screen, if you can capture or not, but a pop-up up here actually scared the hell out of me by the, the sound, uh, yeah, phew, uh, new workflow, let's do that one, and I got a lot of emails, let's skip those ones and hope I don't get any more, since it's knowledge now on home of Sweden, I guess it's all in and knowledge it should be like noon there 11 11 a.m i think so why are we waiting for my workflow to load come on and i just write test i'm just going to show you the branch and let's just do uh, let's just do incident is the simple way and submit so please let me draw something so branch and join is most often do if you want to do parallel stuff and then you want to wait until all the stuff are done to do something else and to do that you first branch out you take that activity I could have pre-made this I guess and I'll just uh, branch then we want to have let's just take some uh, tasks we would like to have two parallel tasks and I'm going to just monitor parallel one submit I'm not going to build our working flow and can't I do like that uh, a couple activity and we just rename that for parallel I misspelled it of course never mind and I'll up that that one so move to and so I would like to get rid of that one so I want these two tasks to first be created and when those are done want to join <coughs> I want a third task to to run and I just call that one join and just drag this one in here and then I'll just copy that one put it down here and we just 
main default last task. <clears throat> so basically, this is what you can do in a workflow. Let's do like that. How's the scene? Good. And to make it look a little bit better. Sounds like that. So we start the workflow, we branch out. These two tasks are being created directly. And since we have the wait for completion checked, that one means that it waits until uh, the task has been complete or canceled. Then it will move that one. Join will see that it's still waiting for this one. When this task is also created, then this task will be created. Now we want to do the same functionality in a flow. And it might be, hmm, how do I do this? Because you don't have those activities called branch or join. But I have actually just made one to show you. This is pretty much the same thing. Let me just get rid of the, the log like that. So what we actually use is the do the following in parallel. So the first thing we do is branch out. You can call this a branch. First branch is create this catalog task. I also have the wait check here. Then of course I can add more actions just like you can add more stuff in that flow. But at the moment we are just going to have the same thing as we have in the workflow. So then this one is done. Then I have another task that this should be created, have the wait. And then I have the third one down here that actually is the last task. So how do the do the following in panel works? What it actually do is this one runs these in parallel but it doesn't go down to the next action until all the parallel flows has been completed. So until these are being completed, it will not do this step. So basically you can see that the do the following in parallel always has a join. You don't need to add it, it's there anyway. And to show you how it looks like, let's test this workflow. I'll just hit it on, hmm, I think we can take that one. Zero, 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 a lot of ones, zeros and just a one. There we go, uh, can I, I can't mark that one. Let's take a look at the flow. As you can see, it's waiting because these ones are actually waiting for those tasks to be finished. This one hasn't been run yet. Let's take a look at the request. Uh, do I have it here as well? There we go. Let's see. Requitem.list. And let's see how that one looks. That's how it goes when you steal stuff. And I think I actually reused it as well uh, to test earlier. Just uh, let's do like this instead. Ah, I'll just add create and you can see what happened. Uh, create, create, create. Let's move it up here. And you can see that the two of those, 12 and 13 in the end, was just created. You can see the timestamps. So those two are created and now the system is waiting for them to be closed. So if I close, let's close that one, close complete, and we'll close this one. So now I have closed both of them. And let's wait for the flow. And now you can see task number three has been created. If I go to the flow and rerun, you can see now these have been completed and waiting for this one since I actually have the wait condition there as well. 
So if I go in here and actually close this one as well, you will see that the flow will be finished. Everyone closed. Let's go in, let's refresh and complete it. So basically to achieve the same thing that you have here in a workflow, you use what is called do the following in parallel like this, have the different branches and then it will wait until the branches are complete and then and just like in the normal workflow if i uncheck this one everything will be created because then the branches will automatically be finished and it will move down and create this one uh, just to show you what i mean i'll go and uncheck wait so basically what will happen now is since we don't have the weight on these two branches it will create this <coughs> excuse me this task directly as well so let's just hit uh, the same request and it will still be waiting since i didn't remove weight on the last one but as you can see these ones are completed because it's not waiting for a task to be complete but this one is still waiting going back here you should see we should probably have 15 16 and 17. so i'll refresh 15 16 and 17. there we go so this is how you do branching and join in a flow hope that will help you guys build some really cool flows and i'll take it from that and say goodbye